Hello viewers and welcome back. You might recognize this car, you might recognize this clip. I decided to go back and make another video on how to replace the timing chains on this 2.4 liter Ecotec engine step by step. Now, first off, you want to verify the problem and in this case you can see that we have code stored for timing issues. I've explained that in my first video. The first step is to remove the valve cover. and This is simply done by removing the 10 millimeter bolts that hold the ignition coils and the valve cover in place. You'll also want to remove the camshaft solenoid actuator valves. They may have 10 or 8 millimeter bolts. Remove these components, set them off to the side. Inspect the timing chain components and the chain itself for wear and damage. As you can see we have play in this timing chain indicating a failure. Again, as I clarified in the video before, this is not entirely necessary but in order to make a better video for you guys and so you can clearly see what's going on, I raised the car off the subframe. Remove the engine mount on the passenger side and then remove the front timing cover. Rotate the engine until cylinder number one is at top dead center on the compression stroke. This can be verified by inspecting the camshaft lobes on cylinder number one. If the lobes are not opening any valves and the piston is at the top, this indicates top dead center. Remove the top timing chain guide. Remove the front timing chain guide lower bolt. If the guide comes out, Without having to remove the top bolt, this is a good sign that the timing chain guide has broken. As you can see, the bottom guide is broken, and on the top it is fractured as well. That's why we were able to take it out without removing the top bolt. But we will have to remove the top bolt anyway to install the new tensioner, so remove the access plug, and using a magnetic 10 millimeter socket, remove the bolt. The top timing chain guide bolt will most likely be damaged. Make sure this is replaced. Remove the timing chain tensioner with a 32 millimeter wrench. Loosen the timing chain tensioner guide. This will aid in the removal of the timing chain. Might take a little bit of working, but eventually you will be able to get it off the intake and exhaust cam sprockets. Once loose, remove the intake and exhaust camshaft sprocket bolts. Remove the exhaust camshaft sprocket, then the intake camshaft sprocket. Lower the timing chain through the engine and out through the timing chain cover near the crankshaft sprocket. May take a little bit of working, but eventually the timing chain will come out. Finally, remove the timing chain tensioner guide. When installing the new chain, I found it's handy to have a little hook tool to help pull the new chain up through the top of the engine to the camshaft sprockets. There are different ways to do this, but I found this helps. Install the new tensioner guide through the top of the engine. Then, start the bolt by hand, but don't fully tighten it yet. Install the intake camshaft sprocket. Make sure the pin aligns with the opening on the end of the camshaft. Rotate the chain until the unique colored link lines up with the diamond mark on the intake camshaft sprocket. Install the exhaust camshaft sprocket. Make sure the pin lines up with the little opening on the end of the camshaft. Install new camshaft sprocket bolts. It is very important these bolts are not reused because they are torque to yield bolts. We'll get to that later on in the video. Do not reuse the old bolts. Using a 24 millimeter wrench, rotate the exhaust camshaft 45 degrees or so clockwise until the alignment mark on the camshaft sprocket aligns with the darker colored link. Make sure that the crankshaft timing mark aligns with the darker colored link on the timing chain. Double check and make sure all the timing marks align with the colored links on the timing chain. 
Install the front timing chain guide. This is the one that broke previously. Start the timing chain guide bolt by hand. Then using the 10 millimeter magnetic socket, start the top timing chain guide bolt by hand. Install a new timing chain tensioner and tighten to 55 foot-pounds of torque. Once all the timing chain components are positioned properly, go back and hand tighten them with a 10 millimeter socket. Do not over tighten. Release the timing chain tensioner so it will ratchet out by placing a rubber handle against the timing chain tensioner and tapping it with a rubber mallet. Install the upper timing chain guide. Rotate the engine crankshaft a full 720 degrees. This will rotate each camshaft by 360 degrees. While rotating the engine, pay very close attention to the resistance on the crankshaft. If your engine is timed properly, the valves will not contact the pistons. If the engine is timed improperly, the valves could contact the tops of the pistons causing serious damage. Rotate the engine and make sure no interference occurs. Using a torque wrench, tighten the camshaft sprocket bolts to 22 foot-pounds of torque. Once this is complete, go back and tighten the bolts again a second pass an additional 100 degrees. Use the 24 millimeter wrench to hold the camshaft in place while tightening these bolts an additional 100 degrees. Reinstall the front timing cover and other components. It's basically the reverse procedure of how you took them off. I'm going to lower the vehicle back down onto the engine here, reinstall the valve cover with new gasket, spark plugs, ignition coils, and other hardware. It's a reverse procedure of how you got to this point. Fairly simple. Okay, I didn't document much of putting the car itself back together other than the timing chains, but here's the finished project. Fluids are topped off. Everything's put back together. We're ready to fire it up, see how it sounds. Make sure no codes reset.